start praying with power, then you will start seeing differences. Theodore Roosevelt once said, nobody cares how much you know until they know how much you care. But there is a group out there today that almost seems like it is caring too much. Being an empath is when you are affected by other people's energies and have an innate ability to intuitively feel and perceive others. Your life is unconsciously influenced by other desires, wishes, thoughts, and moods. Being an empath is much more than being highly sensitive and is not just limited to emotions. Empaths feel positive, loving emotions deeply and appreciate in subtitles of beauty, art, and music. They flourish in calm, loving, and peaceful environments. On the flip side, however, Empaths feel all emotions keenly, even negative emotions, says Dr. Orloff. They are so in tune to others' negative feelings, they become angst-sucking sponges. As a result, they are vulnerable to emotional abusers who want to use and manipulate them. Stressful situations and people overwhelm them and often trigger serious issues like depression, anxiety, weight gain, and addiction and what's interesting to me is that years and years ago it's different today my sister who got a little bit uh, was pretty much at she was just married and had ki a couple of young kids and everything seemed fine but all of the sudden she disconnected from my mother because she said that every moment every feeling that my mother had positive or negative she made her own and was struggling with it so much that it really hurt my mom, but she separated from my mother, our mother, for two years to try to deal with it in a worldly way. Now, when I've gotten to know Ted Killian, who is with me today, who is an empath in a good way, he had to learn how to cope with that. So we want to talk to you today about how do you make something that seems so bad with so many influence in something very good that is a God gift and not to destroy you, but to build you up. Ted, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Now, you are an empath. What is it, really, that uh, you guys go through? Uh, pretty much total sensitivity to everything around you. Uh, as a child, I was, uh, I felt everybody's emotions, everybody's feelings and so forth, and uh, it was very hard on me. It was oppressive, depressing. And I did not know how to act and did not know how to feel around other people. I pretty much isolated myself. So it, it said earlier in the statistic that you almost kind of what Dr. Orloff said, that you want to separate yourself just to stay away from noise. Is noise sensitive to you? Noise was sensitive. Everybody else's feelings and emotions. Uh, I come from a very dysfunctional family. My mom was divorced and married three times. My father was divorced and married three times also. So the... Uh, Functionality at home was always in violence and anger, and we'd go to somebody else's house for Christmas. We'd go to stepmom and dad's house for Christmas. They'd buy us presents, so we couldn't take them home, and we couldn't understand why things were going on the way they were going. Mm -hmm. And we always, I always felt their emotions and their anger, and I internalized it, and I always thought it was me. So as a child taken up, growing up, we, uh, we take on their feelings and emotions, and we think it's our fault. So you make, that's almost like a kid thinking it's their fault that their parents divorce. That's right. But then this is all the time. All the time. At probably three years old, they had me in a football helmet because I'd pound my head on the ground. And I couldn't figure, I didn't know what was going now, on. Now, why were you pounding? Is that because you take everything in? Do you hear voices? Well, I don't hear voices, but I just feel everybody's emotions. And... Uh, Probably around five years old, I moved to Clear Lake. I was out in the country then, and everything pretty much just calmed down. We had a little small house out in the middle of a walnut field. I had a little pony, and, and everything was good for two or three years. I came back into the Bay Area, um, into Belmont, in my fifth and sixth grade year, and it started over again. I was just I was in the middle of a lot of people, larger town, and. Uh, I started taking things on again, so I started drinking and, and using drugs, and by the time I was 16 years old, I was an IV drug user. Oh, wow. Now, wasn't your mother an alcoholic as well? Yes, my mom was an alcoholic, and she drank until she died. She died from it. Oh, wow. 
So here you are, you're trying to deal with all these emotions, all these issues, start drinking, you got married, but you were married three times. Yes, I was. Do you yeah. think being an empath and not knowing how to deal with made an impact on that? Well, yeah, because I was always searching for love and I had this hole and I didn't have any spiritual foundation at that time and I didn't know anything about what was going on with me. I did not understand why I was feeling the things I was feeling or why I was acting the way I was acting. So I oppressed that by drinking and by using and uh, by working. Help? Oh yes. Helped good. So that, was that it. the solution? Well, it wasn't the solution. The Lord was the solution. I found that out further on in my life. I'm probably about 50 years old for that. But. Wow. Wow. So you're a drug user, you got married three times, you divorced each time. At that point, I assume, especially as an empath, you just want to hide away from the world, lock yourself up and just start your own creative word, world. Is that what you did? Well, my world really focused on my work. If I was working all the time, I worked 16, 17 hours a day, seven days a week. If I was working, I was focused and I did not hear anything else that was going on around me. Mm. And that's how I survived. I came in at 36 years old and was beat, I was tired, I needed help, and that's when I finally started to recover from drug use and alcohol oh, wow. use. But I came into the rooms, I got sober, I got clean, and... Uh, you mean like AA meetings and those yeah, kind of meetings? Yeah, that's where I started off was AA, NA at 36, and uh, I got clean, I got sober, I asked God to remove the obsession, and He did. And then I went back into work again, and it all started over again because I left the God out of it. I'm clean, I'm working 17 hours a day, I'm married again for my third time, and uh, I'm just working myself to death. Right. I'm in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, Alcoholics Anonymous, and I walk in the door and I just don't fit. I don't like being there. I feel everybody else's oppression. Oh, so you take it on, so and the I'm moment you accept it, on, it comes yeah. in. You yeah, become by, part of it. Mm -hmm. So wow. what I did with that was I got into uh, the activities in the committees. I, I got onto uh, Another thing to do. Correct. I always worked behind the scenes. I'd put on large events and so forth as long as I was focused and helping others. Wow. It kind of helped me settle down from what I was doing and I was working full time. Wow. And there's much more like that. I want to get back to that. Just next for you. We're going for a break, but next. When Ted's 14-year-old died in a car accident. Was he able to deal with it? Stay tuned. Greetings, this is Pastor Glory. Friends, if you're going through hard times, be it financial, be it hardships, be it the marriage, whatever you're going through, I recommend you check out the barbtv.org show. If you have not found the answers you're looking for, I really suggest you look up the website, that you look into some of the programs that they carry. They have so many helpful, godly hints, godly counsel. I highly recommend it. We have a new series that's called Power Up. And if you want to get powered up about Jesus, powered up in your relationship, and starting to see really what God has in mind for you, we'd love for you to connect. Will you go for us to barktv.org, where you will find information in how to learn more about Power Up? I'd love to come to your area and speak for you, or come check us out on our website, 855-515-5550 or barktv.org. According to research conducted by Elaine Aaron, a psychologist at Stony Brook University in New York, 20% of the population are genetically predisposed to be more aware and empathic. She and her research team have found physically evidence in the brain that empaths respond especially strongly to certain situations that trigger emotions. Dr. Aaron says, we found that areas of the brain involved with our awareness and emotion, particularly those areas connected with empathetic feelings in the highly sensitive people showed substantially greater blood flow to relevant brain areas that was seen in individuals with low sensitivity during the 12 second period when they viewed the photos of happy and of sad 
faces. With me is Ted Killian of A Way Out Ministries, and he is an empath and will help us to understand in how he deals with life and how we could be an encouragement to him. Ted, you had a moment in your life that you finally were saying, I, me personally, I can do this. I fight my way out. I'm on top of it. But then your daughter died in a car crash at the age of 14 and your ex-wife committed suicide. Did that make an impact on you? Oh, yeah, severe impact. I was very, very young in my recovery. I think I had uh, five years clean, as we state, when we're in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous. And I had two choices. I was either going to go get loaded, stick a needle in my arm, or I went up to a men's retreat off of Highway 88, and I laid in the back of a truck up there for, for seven days, and I allowed other people to help me through that situation. Wow. And uh, see, I, I still didn't know what was going on with my emotions and so forth at the time. Because you said earlier, an empath makes all the emotions their own. So if your daughter dies and all this stuff take play, it, it said it's one of the hardest things to deal with in life. Right back to work I went. 12, oh, 14, no. 16 oh. hours a day. And that's what I did. And, and about two years later, uh, her mother took her own life. And that was, I believe, in 2006. And uh, I'm still trying to figure out what's going on with me. I'm uh, emotionally frail. I'm full of fear. I'm wearing the best clothes I can find. I've got rings all over my fingers. Don't get near me. Don't touch me. You're going to find out I'm 12 years old and I don't know how to live. 12 year old in a adult body because that's when you started using drugs? That's when I started using, yes. And I'm feeling all these emotions and I'm taking on all this and I'm not knowing what to do with it. And uh, I can say for a true fact that Narcotics Anonymous gave me a foundation and gave me something to, to live by. But see, we talked about God, but we didn't, you could not say Jesus in the room. So the only person that taught me about Jesus was my grandmother. And uh, she, I believe, is the one that has always prayed for me. She's passed now, but in probably 2009, I'm at the end of my ropes. I'm just, I'm done. I'm finished. I've, I've told myself I'm going to get three houses. I'm going to have a half a million dollars in the bank, and I'm going to retire. You were numbing the pain. Numbing you my pain. You were just numbing the pain and the emotions all this time. Right. And now, in this midst, didn't you have a sister that, when you connected with her, said something like, do you need the Holy Spirit? Yeah, Tracy, we were, uh, we were both on the streets very young. I was 14 and she was 12 and we left home. And uh, she received Holy Spirit 10, 12 years before I did. You know, I was still stuck in my insanity. Now, what about God and Jesus? Why Holy Spirit? Well, Holy Spirit, that's who's left behind to guide us. He's our comforter, he's our enabler. He is the way and the wisdom and all the knowledge. Now, as an empath, does that bring you any hope to say, maybe the Holy Spirit can help me to get through this? Oh, yeah. Or did you not even realize what was really going on inside of you? No, she'd walk up to me and say, Ted, have you got Holy Ghost yet? I go, no, Tracy. And she'd tap me on the shoulder and smile and say, don't worry, you will. Oh, yeah. wow. And then she died in 2009 of a heroin overdose downtown Stockton. Um, I call on a Saturday night. I'm going to go pick her up from county jail. I'm all excited. I make her breakfast burritos. and. I get there at 6.30, they're letting her out at 7 a.m. and they'd already released her and I, could, I knew. I just felt that I wasn't gonna see her again. And uh, they called the next day, Monday morning, I got the phone call, she killed, overdose, downtown Stockton, heroin overdose. Mm. And uh, that's when I finally said, I'm done, God, what, what do you want from me? Can you help me? And I took a look at my life, everything that was going on and uh, I shut down my business. The woman that I'd married at two years clean in the rooms of Narcotics Anonymous, she's going one way and I'm looking for God and we're separating. And so I gave her a home, I gave her a bunch of money and I told her, I said, you know, this, this marriage was not of God and is not in God and we're going our separate ways. So I got divorced, I gave her a home and uh, I'm praying and the Lord just told me, be still. And that's what I heard. Isn't that what empaths need the most? Don't we all need to be still in front of God? Yeah, and it, and it took me from 2010 till now to understand what was going on and who I am. See, I didn't understand about empath or wasn't informed of it until probably 2013. Wow. 
Well, it was later than that. It was 2015 because I'm going to this church and they're telling me all about Jesus, but they're not telling me about Holy Spirit mm. and the giftings in the book of Acts and how much power and authority we have in the name of Jesus, the blood. Now I've been told that pastors in the most average churches don't know what to do with people like you. Is that true? Yeah, we're, we're, causing, we're causing quite the stir because when Holy Spirit says pray for somebody, you know, you step out and you do as the Lord says and they're receiving Holy Spirit, they're receiving the anointing, they're hitting the ground and they're getting their prayer language and everybody's a little bit nervous, scared, shook up. Or, uh -huh. But see, the Lord says go ahead and pray for that person and whatever happens afterwards is none of your business. I will take it from there. So I just go out and I pray for people and I walk away. And it's the most glorious thing just to see the love. Oh, because when I came in, I'm going to be jumping back and forth here, but probably around 2015, I'm sitting in, in church and I'm saying, Lord, if this is all there is to you, forget it. I'm done. Very good. And I want to pick it up right there. We have a little bit more because this is the moment that it turned around for Ted. This can be that moment that is going to turn around for you. What is it gonna take for you to get right with God? Stay tuned. Hi, I'm Diane Gardner from Riverside, California, and I've had the privilege today of being interviewed by Barbara Marshall. This was a great experience. You need to stay tuned and listen to what's going on because this is the real deal. And that's the name of the program, The Real Deal. And we discovered how to have a, be a parent of a child that's committed a crime, to be the parent of a violator and know what to do in situations like that, how to trust God. That's a subject that you really don't ever hear about and Barb, captures the tough issues and I love this program. So be sure and stay tuned to barbtv.org and see that we are here to serve you. Glad you came, glad you're listening. Tell others, I'm gonna go back home and tell others about this program, barbtv.org. And remember, Diane Gardner recommended it. God bless you. Being an empath is not a disorder. It is an innate quality you should never feel shameful about. Although some of the traits of empaths make it more difficult to operate in a world dominated by less sensitive people, there are many positive aspects of being an empath. Empaths are naturally giving, spiritually attuned, attuned and good listeners. If you want heart, empaths have got it. Through thick and thin, they are there for you. World class nurturers. Now that is you today. But before you were able to completely change to who God made you, what was that aha moment that you finally knew you had completely arrived and the past was the past and you for who you were, how God created you, not people, how God created you, there was a reason for it. Mm, baptism of Holy Spirit. Okay. Like as I stated, I was sitting in this church and I said, Lord, what am I going to do now? If this is all there is to you, I'm finished. And I heard a voice that said, you're done here. And the room got brighter. And about two seconds, three seconds later, a guy came up to me and tapped me on the shoulder and says, hey, I, I think you're ready for what I have to show you. I'm taking you uh, up to Ion tomorrow morning to, to meet a charismatic pastor up there. And, and uh, they took me up to... Uh, a pray and obey conference and I met Thomas Weisenhut and his wife Sue and uh, he told me about the, the three baptisms. Uh -huh. I'd only known of two. Uh -huh. And he told me about demons and deliverance and I told him, oh yes, I want this. And so he, uh, he delivered me. I could feel him coming out. I was coughing him up. You were delivering from what? You know, I've had that cough before. I know what you're well, talking about. Delivered from what? from demons, from strongholds. Uh -huh. You know, the, we stay in this world for so long, we, uh, we receive attachments. We are, are we talking the demon of rejection, the demon of anger? What, what are you talking spirit about Spirit of fear, spirit of rejection, spirit of lust, spirit of, uh, gosh, there are so many. 
Uh, the one I'm trying to, Arrested Development, that one was just removed from me. Wow. So you have gone through all those AA meetings, which was a great foundation for mm -hmm. you to get to know what was right and wrong, but it did not deal with the root of the problem. Is that no. what I'm hearing you say? That was it right there, yeah. See, now they... that Thomas worked with you, and I know Thomas, he's a great guy, Thomas Weisenhunt with mm -hmm. Pray and Obey, but now that you were delivered, did you feel a difference? Oh, yeah. I felt the love, I felt the Holy Spirit, I felt fire. I was baptized by fire, I was cleansed. And the change began, the transformation began because of, of the Holy Spirit deliverance. And uh, he told me, he says, you know, you're gonna have to learn about these things, Ted, because everybody that comes into your ministry has attachments and strongholds, you know, because I, I deal with addicts. Uh, we do detox and deliverance. And so he, he told me, you're going to have to learn about this stuff. So I kept going to, to him and a couple other individuals, learning the word. And uh, the strongholds, just one at a time, were being removed. Wow. One wow. at a time, being removed, becoming more in belief of myself. And uh, that spirit of arrested de of development I just spoke about, you know, and I had a, an individual tell me that's what they thought it was. And, I said, let's get rid of it. I went in for prayer. I felt it come out my ear. I said, it's right here, it's hurt, because you can feel the pain when it's coming out. It mm -hmm. came out my right ear, and then it switched sides and came over here. The rest of it came out my left ear, and the next morning I said, okay, Lord, tell me about my childhood. Oh, and he wow. took me through my whole childhood, Holy Spirit did, remembering all the friends' names of all the friends I had, all things that happened, and it was the most beautiful experience in my life. Oh, wow, because I was ready for the worst, but if God is in it, That's right. did you see it from His side instead of your painful side and as a child without Him? Yeah. And He was there through all wow. of it for me. Oh, my goodness, that is amazing. Today, yeah. you're an empath. God created you that way. Why? I believe it's to do the things I'm doing now. And what is it that you do today? I do detox and deliverance. We bring people in, they'll be uh, shooting two and a half grams of heroin, a pocket full of psych meds, and day three or four, we get them to where they're coherent enough. We're talking to them about Jesus. They, they come into salvation. We ask them to put their hands up, and we tell them about Holy Spirit. They receive baptismal Holy Spirit. They usually fall out on the couch and get their prayer language, and then we raise disciples. Wow, wow. Plain and simple. But the story of that was, though, see, I went to one gentleman, and he told me about who I was. I walked up on him the last, a prophetic individual, and I'm walking up to talk to him, and I'm about five feet away, and he goes like this. Oh. And he starts to tear up, and he says, what do you do? And I told him I'm an IV drug user of 20 years, and, and now I do a recovery house. And he says, well, people like you and I, we have to learn how to stop everything that, that is going on around us. It's not yours, it's yeah. everybody else's and you're letting it in. He just told me, you know, Holy Spirit, close my gates, guard my kingdom. And that was the start of understanding of my empathic situation. So, so he, God brought the right person to you yes, to help you completely understand that. What a gift. It's been that way every step of the way. Wow, it's like he's guiding, leading, and directing you. You have a half house today. You're helping people that used to be you. Yes. And now look at you today. How does it feel to be completely free? I give all the glory to God. Every time one of those men come in and they receive it, they receive salvation, they receive baptism of the Holy Spirit, I just got paid. Wow. Now, yeah. real quick question, because you gave everything away you had. You gave everything to God, and he, he provided all your needs. He provides everything. You as an empath, to work with a half a house, with a, almost like a dozen people or whatever it is. Six we have to, six in there now. Six people that all have what you would make your own in the past. How do you deal with that now? It's through Holy Spirit. He tells me my sensitivity works in my favor now. Wow. I can pretty much see what their strongholds and their attachments and are. And you catch on right away. Yeah. Because so there's, there's spiritual strongholds and then there's strongholds of unbelief and, and false truth. Yeah. And spiritual strongholds are usually backed by demonic possession. That's true. So. so, Ted, if somebody wants to get a hold of your website, what, what's your website? 
I don't have a website, but I have an email address. It's awayout6113 at gmail.com. Okay, that's great. We don't advertise. We let the Lord bring the people here that he wants to And I'm sure it happens. Up. I want to thank you for being on the show. It was a great honor. I've learned so much from you. And then I, I can say keep up the good work, but I don't have to because he's in charge. Amen. He's already doing that. And just want to give you a little bit of a scripture here out of Colossians. And it's a prayer because it might be you that is heartbroken, that is struggle, that your past is hunting you, good or bad or whatever mm -hmm. it is. I just want you to know there is hope for you. Why? Because there was hope for me and there was hope for Ted. So can I use a prayer out of the Bible to encourage you right now? Colossians 1, starting at verse 11. We also pray that you will be strengthened with all its glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and the patience you need. May you be filled with joy, always thanking the Father. Start by being thankful. He has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. For he has rescued us from the kingdom of darkness and transferred us into the kingdom of his dear son who purchased our freedom, your freedom, and forgave our sins. My dear friends, that is what Jesus wants for you. That's what he has done for Ted. That's what he has done for me. And we want to help you to achieve that. Get to know God. Check out our Power Up series online at barbtv.org. Or will you give us the honor to pray with you? 855-515-5550. And again, it's barbtv.org. And know this, that God who believes so much in you who would not yeah. stop trying to help Ted is the same God that wants to help you, encourage you, and just be there for you. And I can see one of you that is specifically really crying right now. Just know you're not alone. Give us a call and know that God is bigger than your problem. God loves you, and so do I. And know this, that will never stop. Have a great day. You both came out of dysfunctional families, and I'm guessing at this. You both became dysfunctional families, and we're creating a future dysfunctional family. That sounds like a setup. And he'd come from, um, you know, uh, being a Catholic and also a Seventh Day Adventist, so it was, you know, a. Whoa, 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 wait a minute. He came from a background of Seventh Day Adventist and a Catholic. Your background was Jehovah Witness, Buddhist, Baptist, and Mormon, mostly Mormon. What a mix!